an eight-year-old to settle the throne. Thank you so much. God did that. He allowed this eight-year-old boy to take the throne. Josiah quickly learned that he had inherited a spiritual mess as a kingdom. His grandfather, Manasseh, Manasseh was the son of King Hezekiah. We talked about that. He began his reign at age 12. Manasseh reigned for 55 long years. He, he, he reigned longer than any Hebrew king ever. But it was an evil reign. He, he, under his leadership, he built the heathen altars that his father, Hezekiah, had destroyed. He built the altar. A bell. Are you are you praying? I, I want to know are you praying with me today? Yes. God is trying to talk to the church. Only at the end of Manasseh's life did he regret his action uh -huh. and he seek from the Lord forgiveness. <coughs> Think about this. 55 years of leadership leading the people astray. Uh -huh. I want you, when you get home, I want you to do some biblical study. I want you to go into the Word of God. Amen. And read the things that was going on under his leadership. Amen. He had a whole lot of pagan. Amen. Things that's going on today. I, I, I could call them out, but I want you to read for yourself a whole lot of things that was going male prostitution, female prostitution, a whole lot of stuff that he allowed under his watch. You can imagine. Yeah. But God, Josiah's father, God, uh, amen, his name was Amos. <clears throat> he behaved even worse. So God, in his wise wisdom, God knew the changes had to take place. He, he, he promoted paganism. Uh -huh. But unlike his father, uh -huh. he never repented. Even though 55 years of Manasseh, we know that he did change, but this character we are talking about now, he never repented. Uh -huh. He reigned only for two years mm -hmm. before his wickedness came back on him and he was assassinated uh -huh. in his own home. Yes. Think about that, being mm -hmm. a leader and being assassinated uh -huh. in your own home by the grace of God Almighty. Mm -hmm. <laughs> God, what he did, he handpicked the eight-year-old boy that did not allow his father's footsteps, didn't walk, didn't follow after his father's footsteps. I'm glad that his ancestor influenced that he did have some good people in his life, uh, did root up from his great-grandfather, Hezekiah. Yes. Yeah. Josiah, he made a spiritual leap into the concepts of God's divine plan and at age 16, still young, amen, still we call unexperienced or have no experience. He began to seek the Lord at age 16. I'll never forget when the Lord saved me, I was at age 17. Seeking the Lord. He seek the Lord. Maybe this young king, he began by asking God, God, you called me when I was eight, now I'm 16 and I'm seeking you. What I need for you to do, God, I, I, I need your guidance. I need your understanding. I need your vision. I need your leadership. I need your divine wisdom. God had to have heard this king. Yes. Because we find him at age 20, he started purging the country mm -hmm. exactly. of Judah. We, we, we talked about that purging, what purging means in Sunday school. Mm -hmm. What happened to Judah was uh, Judah lost her praise. Mm -hmm. Anytime we lose our praise, yes. paganism has taken over yes. our life. Amen. Just watch a person, not judge a person, watch a person where paganism has taken 
over them. Mm -hmm. If you watch them long enough, mm -hmm. they don't like to praise God. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they think that it's foolish to take to do all that. Mm -hmm. So this young king, he, he had to try to clean up the wrong. Mm -hmm. He tried to clean up the mess of his forefathers, mm -hmm. the stuff that they had committed. What was sad is that Judah, uh, this young king had no idea just how much mess or how bad things had got. Mm -hmm. So church, uh, uh, until he, he started to restore the house of the Lord, then he began to see things. Yes. It takes money to restore the house of the Lord. Yes. Yeah, to finance the repairs. Because when paganism come in, mm -hmm. no one really cares about the structure of God's house. Yes. King Josiah, he sent his scribe to retrieve money mm -hmm. from the temple's treasure. Mm -hmm. Only uh, for the scribe to learn a remarkable discovery. Yes. What he learned was the high priest uh, uh, told him in, in, in 2 Kings uh, 22 and 8, he told him these words. Amen. A part of the scripture says, I have found the book of the law in the house of the Lord. Yes. Some uh, theorists, some theologians believe that King Hezekiah had burnt all the scrolls of the law. Except for this hidden copy here in our text. Amen. I, I, I don't know about this theory. The only thing I come here to share with you today is all I know is that the documents and, and the newfound treasure was presented to the king. Uh -huh. Amen. I don't know about all that theory, but I know that it was presented to him. God can turn our past failures in, 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 into new found blessings yeah. in our life. Yeah. We don't have, have to go out looking. Mm -hmm. Just look inside of you. Yes. Your treasure today is inside of you. Uh -huh. God's got a temple inside of you. Yes. The treasure of God is inside of you. So stop looking. Uh, stop going around trying to find it somewhere else because it's inside of you. But one thing about S-I-N, sin. Sin has gotten and caused us to be blind. Yes. A sin will hinder us from seeing that the treasure is inside of you. Yeah. And, and we can't see, we, we can't see the treasure, but it's inside of you. So stop looking, I said, uh, at your mess or somebody else's mess yeah. and see the treasure mm -hmm. inside of you. Yeah. You are valuable, the Lord told me to tell you, to God. inside of you. I, I wish I had some help here. Yes, yes. These scrolls are contain written writings of Moses, which in the past had, had been reserved and observed by God's people. Yes. At least until Judah began to worship pagan gods and they began to neglect God's command. Mm -hmm. Paganism only comes when we stop listening to God's word. Yes. If you don't watch it, paganism will cause us to get sleepy uh -huh. when the preacher is trying to preach yeah. God's word. Preach, boy. Uh -huh. Paganism, amen, will say, have us to think that it's getting ready to rain outside. Uh -huh. And I need to help and get out of church so I can yeah. clean my automobile. Uh -huh. uh, then, then paganism, I said, when we stop listening to the word. Yeah. Paganism will come. Yeah. At age 26, he's getting older now. The king, when he heard his scroll read, uh, out loud he told him and several other servants, he 
said these words, inquire of the Lord for me. And the people and all of Judah concerning the words of this book that has been found. For great is the wrath of the Lord yes. that, that burns against us because our fathers have not listened to the words of this book. Uh -huh. You see, when the king, amen, he had what was read in the book, he, he realized that God was upset with the people. As we get ready here to leave here because our minds might be on Dallas Cowboys or might be on the Green Bay Packers, I don't know. <laughs> but King uh, Josiah, amen, in the text he had compassion for his people despite their rebellious behavior. Uh -huh. He knew that they were uh, messing up. He knew that praise had left God's house, yeah. but he still had compassion uh -huh. on them. Come on, listen yeah. to the scripture verse. In 2 Kings 23 and 25, mm -hmm. it speaks about, amen, God, he lets us hear about a good king. Mm -hmm. The Bible says, and life unto him was there no king before him that turned to the Lord? Amen. Look how they turned with all his heart yes. and with all his soul and with all his might yes. according to all the law of Moses. Yes. Neither after him. Look at that. God goes even after him. It won't be a better king arose down See God, when you're doing right, God will keep up with you. Yes. It really don't matter what folks think about you. Amen. What matters what God is saying about you. So I want to leave you here today and tell you, stop worrying about what others think about you. Yes. And get your mind on what God is saying about you. Yes. I know sometimes we put ourselves down and we hang around people that put us down. He said, could the nation, he wanted to know, could they turn to repentance or not? Or could the damage be reversed before it's too late? He knew what God had said, so what he did, he, amen, he called a prophetess. He called a woman to come forward. You see, I believe why it wasn't a whole lot of men back then that would step up to the plate. Here. What are you saying?
he's Satan, what he tries to do, he tries to use the paganism. Help, help, preacher, help. The game come on at 1.30. You will not get there, I'm going to get there too. But, <laughs> he tries to use paganism to get us away from God. I understand he's a deceiver. He likes to sift us at we Trying to get all of them out of them. All of them. See, that's what brought us here, that praise and worship. When we was down, couldn't sleep at night. Amen. Waking up, disturbed, pressure all over us. We look to the hills. Prophets coming, coming by help and God enable us to go through. We see praise and worship. See, what Satan want to do? He want the church to stop worshiping God. But somebody said these words. They said, no matter what, when I think about it, the goodness of Jesus and all he's done for me is personal now. I can't look around at nobody. And all he's done for me, my soul. I, I try to sit there, but I can't. I try not to preach hard. I try not to sweat. I, I, you know, I like to chill too, but when I start thinking about what he has done for anybody who went through some hard times, even last year, God brought you So my soul starts telling me, why don't you magnify the Lord? Why don't you glorify the Lord? You know if it had not been for you, you wouldn't be here today. You almost lost it last year. But God brought you over. Hey Amen. Remember, God wants to use you. Stop beating on yourself. Stop putting yourself down. If you got friends that's speaking negative stuff in your life, delete their numbers. And ask God to give you somebody positive. Somebody to help push you a little bit forward. Along the highway. Amen. God used Josiah. Amen. God used him. And then God, amen. He glory. He glory. God. Amen. He praised. He was at corporate worship when Josiah came home. Because Joseph, Josiah, he died doing the, the work of God. And that's what God wants to do. He wants commitment out of us. Let's be more committed this year. Amen. You ain't working for me. I'm not working for you. We're working for the Lord. Amen. Don't you want to hear me so well? And let me challenge somebody who never accepted Christ. Today is a day of salvation. It's time to come. It's time to come. People are dying every day. And one of these days is going to be our turn. So make sure, make sure that your soul is right with the Lord. Let me tell you some ways to get your soul right with the Lord. When you love everybody. When you love everybody, amen, you're headed to heaven. When you're humble, God can use you. It ain't about us. It's about God. Let us stand. If we have somebody here today who don't know this, you ought to come.